Hi, welcome to Excited Coder. This is Ajay. In this video, we will be seeing how to install a MongoDB database. MongoDB is an open source NoSQL database system which supports or stores data in document model format. Latest version of MongoDB is MongoDB 3.4. So you can download the MongoDB 3.4 from the mongodb.com slash mongodb 3.4 page by clicking on right now you can download the database system software but the problem here is from 3.3 onwards the mongodb supports only 64-bit systems but the current window system that we are seeing is a 32-bit system so the mongodb has stopped support for 32-bit systems so in order to install mongodb database in a 32-bit window system we have to move to the previous versions so open the Google search page and search for MongoDB Windows 10 or Windows 7 whichever version you are in and type in 32 bit so you'll get a link similar to this download for Windows 32 which will be directed to a page where you can see all the previous versions of MongoDB for Windows operating system so the latest version that, su that was supported for Windows 32-bit operating systems were 3.2 or 3.2.16. So let's try 3.2.16. Click on the link to download the MSI file, installation file. The installation file will be downloaded. It will be around 88.3 MB. So for me, I have already downloaded the MSI file. So this is the MSI file. So in order to start installation, double click on the setup so the mongodb installation wizard will start so on the welcome page click next now you will be given the end user license agreement go through the agreement and check on the i accept terms in the license agreement checkbox and click next here you will be given two options to install MongoDB a complete option and a custom option if you select the complete option all the default features of the MongoDB program will be installed and it occupies a, a bit of more disk space when you click on custom you get to choose what are the features that are going to be installed so we'll try the simplest one we'll be selecting on complete installation click on complete now click on install to start the installation process you will be asked for the user access control access click on yes After the installation finishes will be displayed the completion message so our mongodb 3.2 setup is finish so click on finish so let's see whether our mongodb installation is working or not so in order to check the mongodb installation first you have to create a folder for your database so go to c drive we are going to c drive because in this drive only we have installed our mongodb so click on program folders here you can see the mongodb installation directory so in the C drive we are going to create a folder called data in that folder we have to create another folder named with DB so make sure that you create these two folders in the installation drive of MongoDB or else your MongoDB server will not start now open a command prompt or a powershell in windows so in order to start mongodb you have to use a command prompt so normally what you have to do is to go to the path of the installation and start the mongodb so this would be a very hectic task every time you want to start the mongodb the solution for this is to simply add the installation path to the path environmental variable so go to mongodb installation directory server 3.2 bin select the path copy the path now right click on this 
my computer or this PC select properties select advanced system settings environmental variables and select the path variable and click on edit now you need to add new path so click on new or else you can simply add the path at the last of the current value by separating the path with a semicolon Enter V so this is the path of our MongoDB installation and click on OK OK and again click OK close this window so now we have added the MongoDB installation path to our path environment variable so we can access or start the MongoDB service from anywhere in the system so in order to start the MongoDB service you have to start its main daemon process which is named as MongoD so MongoD is the daemon process or the server process for the database system so click on MongoD and click enter once you have updated the path environmental variable you should restart the PowerShell so that the latest settings will apply so now here type mongo t and press enter now this is an error so the mongodb uh, tries to start the database with the process id and the port it detects the target installation OS which is our windows the database version is 3.2.16 modules are none options and this is our exception or the error it says that cannot start the default storage engine white tiger is not available with this build of mongod so the here the problem is the mongodb comes with two storage engines named white tiger and mmapv1 so mmapv1 is the older engine and the white tiger is the latest one so from around 3.2 onwards the default engine has been changed from mmapv1 to white tiger but the white tiger engine has been designed to work on 64-bit systems so the cause of this error is that we are using a 32-bit system and our DB installation or MongoDB installation is trying to configure the White Tiger storage engine in order to work in this 32 bit environment. So, in order to start the MongoDB, we have to change our storage engine to MMAPV1. As the White Tiger is the default storage engine, we have to change our storage engine to MMAPV1. So, type in the command Mongo space, sorry, MongoD space hyphen hyphen storage engine equal to mmapv1 we don't have to start our mongod process every time with this option once if you have initialized to change the default storage engine to mmapv1 whenever we want to restart the mongodb it detects the mmapv1 storage engine files and sets the default engine to MMAPV1. There are no major differences between the White Tiger and the MMAPV1. The only difference is the White Tiger is the latest and the MMAPV1 is the older storage engine. And the White Tiger only works on 64 bit systems, whereas MMAPV1 works on both 32 and 64 bit systems. So type in the command mongod hyphen hyphen storage engine equal to MMAPV1 and click on enter. So now you will be prompted with the Windows security alert saying that the MongoD we want to allow the MongoD process to access private and public networks. Click on both and click on access, allow access. So now you can see that the command prompt that the MongoD is waiting for connections on port number 27017. So now our MongoD daemon process has been started. So our MongoDB server is working fine. Now open another command prompt or Windows PowerShell terminal. So it's better to uh, start it with administrator permissions. Now in order to connect to the MongoDB server, you have to type in the command mongo. So type mongo and click on enter. Now you will be 
taken to the interactive shell of MongoDB. So you can see the shell currently. So let's try a command show dbs. So show dbs is a command which shows the databases in the MongoDB system. So as we can see there are no current databases. So let's create one. You can create a new database in MongoDB using the use command use test. So test is going to be our database. So use is also a command by using which you can uh, move from one database to another database. So use space database name is the syntax. If there is no database with the name test the MongoDB will create one. So in our case we have created a database with the name test and we have switched it to the database. Currently there will be no data in our database as it has been created just now. As the MongoDB follows document model for storing data we have to insert data in format of documents. Here documents are similar to the tuples or rows in a relational database system and collections are similar to table. So in order to store or insert data in Mongo database we have to first create a collection. In order to create a collection the command is db dot create collection and in parentheses the name of the collection sample. So by this command we are creating a collection with the name sample click on enter so if you get an ok status means that you have created a collection now in order to insert data into the collection we have to use the insert function so db dot the collection name which is sample in our case dot insert and now you can insert any data with JSON format. So open parenthesis. For example, I'm going to insert some uh, employee data into this uh, sample collection as, the, as our first document. So emp underscore id colon and the value 101. Here the data is stored in key and value pairs. So first we have to supply the key value separated by colon and the value and each key and value pairs has been separated by a comma employee id emp underscore name colon j comma emp underscore email colon cited code at gmail dot com so as if we have completed uh, inserting around three values let's try to close it so i think the the i in the insert is small let's try it yeah so the uh, insert function starts with a small i not in capital i it was my mistake so we have inserted our employee record or details as a document collection so now let's see what are the collections that are available in our uh, test database. So the command view the collections in the database is show space collections. Now you can see the sample which we have been created just now. So now let's try to insert an, another document into our sample collection. So db.sample.insert Now the second employee ID will be one or two comma p underscore name will be Steve p underscore uh, email will be Steve at apple dot com so the major advantage in NoSQL systems is that they are schemaless and we can insert as many values as we can without any predefined strict structure. So if I want to add an, another field in the sample collection, so I can with no doubt. For example, I want to add a email uh, contact for the employee emp underscore contact. So this is my contact number. The contact number was not there in the previous employees. Let's see what happens. We have a successful insert. So we have successfully inserted two employee documents 
where each document contains the details of a single employee. Uh, in order to view the details of the data in a collection, we can use the find function db.sample.find. The default syntax will return all documents that are in our sample collection. This is the first document in our sample collection. Starting from here to here. And this is our second collection, second document in our collection. As you can observe, we have inserted an employee ID, empty name, email, but we haven't added this ID value. So what happens here is, whenever you insert a new document into a collection, the MongoDB creates an unique ID field, a 16-digit hexadecimal value. If you provide the ID value, it's okay. If you uh, don't provide the ID value, Mo the MongoDB will uh, provide the ID as well as the value by default. So this is for, you can consider it as a primary key in your table. So which will be unique across all the documents in a collection. So we can see the details in a collection by using the find. And we can also uh, retrieve the specific details from the collection by using the find function only. So db dot sample dot find so find access parameters which are nothing but the key value pairs itself it takes the parameters the key value pairs and matches them with the all the documents uh, in the collection and returns the documents which contain the exact key value pairs so we can as a where clause in our select command in a relational database so let's try how this will work then the key value pairs must be enclosed in parentheses only so let's find out whether we have an employee with employee id which equals to make sure that you give the key and value uh, data in enclosed in quotes so this is our find criteria so let's see what happens the database has been returned the only actually we have two documents in our collection but the uh, find function has returned to one which has matched our criteria which is employee id equal to 101 right so we'll be seeing more details in the upcoming videos hope you like the video thanks for watching